Hello, hola, welcome back to Color and Canvas. Today I'm going to be doing what I like to call a lake pour because the end result will be with a lake of color in the middle and some beautiful designs around it. So let's just get started and I'll explain it as we go. This is a 12 by 12 inch canvas and you can see I have taped the side of the canvas with blue tape and I have created a bit of a dam around the edges. I saw Olga Sobi do this uh, the other day. She's a brilliant artist and I saw her create a dam with tape. And what it will do is it will hold the design in until everything is stretched out and then you can remove the tape and let the excess paint pour over the sides. I thought it was a brilliant idea and I thought it would go really, really well with a lake pour because we have a particular composition in mind with this. So let's try it and see if it works. All I used was regular blue painter's tape, nothing special. So let me tell you about the colors. We have a nice assortment here. All of these paints are mixed with my pouring medium blend, which is 50% Floetrol, 30% glue all, and 20% water. You can see that they're mixed to a pretty kind of medium consistency, actually. It leaves a bit of a mound, doesn't take too long to dissipate. So that is the consistency of all of the paints. This is some leftover metallic blue that I had, um, or sorry, some leftover metallic purple, and I've mixed in just some blue paint with it. So we have like a dark periwinkle. We have some leftover lighter blue metallic, very pretty, a sort of a medium green color. Now this was just regular green paint, not metallic. And so I added a little bit of gold paint to that just to give it a little shine. This is yellow and metallic gold mixed together. This is a metallic pink mixed together with non-metallic red. And this is a blend of uh, copper and brown. It just has a little shine to it. We're not gonna use a lot of that. I am also using white and gold and silver in this pour. Now white and gold and silver, the white and gold are going to go in the pour, the silver is going to be the puddle that I pour into because sometimes air bubbles will come out throughout and I would love it if the air bubbles that popped through the blue in the middle were silver. So let's see whether you know that's going to be a thing. It could, it might, it might not, but let's see what happens. That's going to be what we do. So this will go last. Let's just layer our cup with our paints and we'll get started. So the bottom of the cup needs a reasonable amount of paint because it's going to leave the uh, lake that's in the middle. So I'm actually going to cover the entire bottom with a decent amount of this light blue. That's going to be our middle lake and I think I'm just going to put all of it in there. There we go. And so it is a good strong layer of that. Next I'm going to put in the periwinkle and I'm just going to layer it just a little bit right there because if some of that periwinkle gets in the lake color that would also be fine with me. I think that would look great. And the rest of the paints we're just going to put them along the side in layers. A little bit of gold I'm going to put a little bit more and then I'm going to put some of our green I'm going to put about two layers of each of these colors. A little bit of white, not too much white. And I'm not putting the exact same amount of each of them either, because I don't think that that's necessary. Some of our golden, or sorry, our uh, copper and brown blend, and there's not much in that cup, and that's fine. That's all we're going to use of that. I think I will put in some of our red. Apologize for the motorcycle noise. Can't wait to move out of this neighborhood. <laughs> We're moving in a few weeks to another rental. Our vacation house is not ready yet, so we're still dealing with the noises of the neighborhood. 
Okay, then I will put in our periwinkle dark blue, our second layer of it. All right, I'm going to put a bit more white, just a tiny bit of white there, and then our gold. Good. Some more of our green. Put the rest of the green right in. Put more white. Not going too crazy with the white, you know. We don't want too too much. The rest of our red. Whoops. And the rest of our yellow. Our yellow gold blend rather. And I think I will scrape out the last few drops of our brown and copper. And a little bit more gold. And that's it, that's our cup. That's what we're gonna be pouring. Set that aside right here. We'll put a big puddle of silver in the middle to pour into. Not too big of a puddle, just a puddle. And that's that. And for the pour. We start with a ring pour and then we do a bit of a jiggle. So here goes. Ring pour, circle. until you've used about half of your paint. And I'm actually switching directions a little bit just to give it a little bit of interest. And now I'm gonna start, now that that blue is coming out, we're doing our jiggle pour because we want the blue lake right in the middle. And I can see the blue and the periwinkle has mixed together. That looks really good. I like it mixed together. And so there's the rest of the lake. And we're going to catch the drips. And that's it. There's our lake. That red is really strong and the gold is too. Let's see what that's going to look like when that paint is stretched out. I love it. I think it looks amazing. Even this little detail here is quite interesting on the shore of our little pond. All right, let's give that a little torch for some of those air bubbles that are coming out. Fantastic. I think we need a bit of flow extender around there. So we'll use the leftovers from the cup. Doesn't matter what color they are because they are going to pour off. And we'll put a bit more of that silver around as well. And we'll just spread that paint. OK, 
not as easy to spread when you have that dam around the edges in it. <laughs> and I didn't want to use too, too much paint either because I don't think it's necessary. We have a lot in the middle, but just enough to facilitate some extra movement. I quite love the designs that this paint is making as it's being spread too. Great, that should be enough to get us where we need to go. And I think we'll torch just a bit more. We can see more air bubbles coming. That lake is really big. I may have used a little too much blue paint, but we'll see. Let's see what let's see what happens. We'll just go in a circle here. all the way to the edge and see we don't lose any of that beautiful paint until we're ready to do so. And look at all that stretching out there. We may as well do the other corner while we're at it. And it looks like our lake is going to go all the way to the edge. And it's not going to be this square looking when we're done. <laughs> Just let's not worry about the square lake. It's not going to be square because after we take off this dam and pour off some of this extra paint, it'll change. And if it is square, how cool would that be? <laughs> but it will change for sure. This is interesting. I almost don't even want it to change. It's like this beautiful frame. Wow, I really like the way that looks. Let's see if we can get some of that red to stretch out a little bit. All right, so it is as done as it's getting at this stage. And now we have to remove that tape. So here we go. Where did I leave the last edge? <laughs> there it is. Let me turn it around here. And we will start removing that tape. And paint is going to start pouring right off the edges as soon as we do. So here we go. I'm going to turn that. Holding on to it so that I can keep removing. And I do want it to pour down the sides. I'm not going to leave this on until it dries at all. I want it off right now while everything is fresh and moving. That's it. I think I'm going to torch first before I pick it up.
It almost looks like an aquarium to me. So let's see how much paint we have left. And other than a little bit pouring off the sides, it's in really, really good shape. So we are not pouring off anymore. I'm going to turn it around because I think that's the way it's supposed to go. So those edges are not obviously covered in paint. They're not fully covered in anything. So that's something that after the painting is dry, we get to touch it up by painting the sides in a nice coordinating color, depending on what we end up doing with it. I think I want this red to extend a bit. So I'm just going to do that. Just pull through the edges and let them expand a little. I don't want to tilt it anymore because I don't want to lose this part of our frame. These are beautiful. I really like these. And this is interesting. It's like a little strange little sea bottom, isn't it? But can you just imagine some little fish embellished in here? Oh my goodness, I think that would look amazing. Maybe a little seashell down here where some of these are. Okay, anyways, thanks for watching our little lake pour. And uh, we'll be back to show you the embellished part in just a minute. Stay tuned. All right, we're back. And I wanted to show you the dried one. I apologize for the glare, but it's a rainy day here and I have all the lights on. But you can see beautiful, beautiful details. And it's dried lovely. The colors are so rich and deep. And I may not embellish it, even though I had asked for suggestions on embellishments from uh, people who had viewed the photograph. And a lot of people said, you know, sea life. And that's what I was thinking too. And now I might just leave it the way it is. It leaves something to the imagination. But I wanted to show you the side details. I do have to touch up that little smudge there with some white paint but look how beautiful the sides are and I really really like that after the tape was removed you know the thickness of the paint kept it from just drizzling down I love that side I'm going to conserve all those sides of the details on the sides of the canvas I really like it anyways thanks again for watching always appreciated and uh, please go paint something beautiful have some fun enjoy making yourself some art and have a wonderful day bye bye